Hello, my dear students and the rest of the learners. Welcome to part 14 of an 85 part series of tutorials in object oriented programming in C. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the comparison between a structured programming and object oriented programming. My name is MMGM. You can simply call me Emily Swap. The first comparison between structured programming and object oriented programming is that in structured programming, the top down approach is normally followed, while in object oriented programming, the bottom up approach is followed. Secondly, in structured programming, the focus is on algorithm and the control flow, while in object-oriented programming, the focus is on object model. Number three, in structured programming, the program is divided into a number of submodules, functions or procedures, while in object-oriented programming, the program is organized by having a number of classes and objects. Number four, in structured programming, the functions are independent of each other, while in object-oriented programming, each class is related in a hierarchical manner. Number four, in structured programming, there is no designated receiver in the function call while in object-oriented programming, there is a designated receiver for each message passed. Number six, in structured programming, data and the functions are viewed as two separate entities, while in object-oriented programming, data and the functions are viewed as a single entity. Number seven, in structured programming, maintenance is costly, while in object-oriented programming, maintenance is relatively cheaper. Number eight, in structured programming, software reuse is not possible, but in object-oriented programming, reuse of software takes place. Number nine, in structured programming, function call is used. But in object-oriented programming, message passing is used. Number 10, in structured programming, function abstraction is used, while in object-oriented programming, data abstraction is used. Number 11, in structured programming, algorithm is given importance. However, in object-oriented programming, it is the data that is given importance. Number 12, in structured programming, solution is solution domain specific, but in object-oriented programming, solution is a problem domain specific. Number 13, in structured programming, there is no encapsulation because data and the functions are separate. While in object-oriented programming, encapsulation packages data and they come together, and thus data and the functionalities are put together in a single entity. Number 14, in structured programming, the relationship between the programmer and the program is emphasized. While in object-oriented programming, the relationship between the programmer and the user are emphasized. Number 15, in structured programming, data-driven technique is used, while object-oriented programming is given or is driven by delegation of responsibilities. However, the major differences between structured programming languages, such as C 
and an object-oriented programming language such as C++ is that the aggregate type struct is enhanced and a new type called class is introduced or has been introduced. Variables of type class are called objects. The class encapsulates data as well as functions. This helps in increasing reusability of the code. But the introduction of objects and the classes introduces many new or many few terms and the rules such as inheritance, polymorphism, both static and dynamic, as geared to promote reusability of code. This helps in increasing reusability of the code. But the introduction of objects, just as I have said, as emphasis, the introduction of objects and the classes in object-oriented programming, which in C or in structured programming, we refer to them as variables and structs respectively introduces terms such as inheritance and polymorphism, just as I have said, whose main purpose is to promote the usability of the code. The following are also some of the minor differences between C and C++ programming languages. Remember, from the, that seven series of tutorials already posted in MLSWAP ICT YouTube channel on structured programming using C and Pascal, I covered in depth how you write programs using C language. And therefore, the following are some of the minor differences between the way we code in C and the way we do it in C++ programming languages. So in addition to the regular comments in C, where we used the symbol one slash asterisk, then you write your comment, and then at the end of the comment, you add the asterisk and one slash. So we enclosed comments between the one slash asterisk and asterisk one slash. A facility of single line comment is added in C that we write as two double forward slashes. And that's how we add the comments. That's the difference. Number two, for input and output, instead of depending on functions like scanif and printf that we used in C, in C, we make use of what we call extraction operator that looks or resembles two greater than or double greater than symbols and insertion operator that resembles two less than sign operators along with objects C in and C out respectively as used for input and output. In other words, we combine C in, we combine C in with the, the relevant insertion operator and C out with relevant extraction operator. This simply that 
the output and input operations are simplified by the use of the C out and the C in together with the relevant extraction or insertion operators, as we are going to see in my subsequent presentations. Number three, in C, there was a limitation on the length of identifiers. While in C++, there is no such a limit. Number four, enumeration facility has been improved in C++. That is, the anonymous enum has been introduced. Number five, C++ is stricter about the types of the operands of assignment operator. Number six, in C, symbolic constants are created using hash defined only. But in C++, we have two more alternatives, which are const qualifier and enhanced facility of enumeration. Number seven, in C, all the variables used in a block have to be declared in the beginning of the block only. But in C++, a variable can be declared at any point of use, wherever required within the block. Number eight, C++ has introduced the concept of reference operator. This concept provides an alternative and a more efficient way of calling a function by reference. Number nine, C++ provides a scope resolution operator. This is handy when you have to resolve the conflict between a local variable and a global variable having the same name. Number 10, C uses malloc function, colloc function, and free functions for dynamic allocation of memory, as well as freeing the memory that has been allocated. But C++ uses two operators, the new and the lead operators for the same purpose. Number 11, unformatted input and output, or in relation to unformatted input and output, the insertion and extraction operator do their tasks in C++ without the programmer telling them specifically about the types of the variables. But in C, the programmer has to specify the type of variable in scanif and printive functions. Number 13, in relation to format and input and output, the facilities for formatting provided in C are improved dynamically by introduction of manipulators in C++. Number 13, in C, prototypes of functions which return integer values were not compulsory, but they are compulsory in C++. Number 14, C++ has a facility of passing default values to functional parameters, which is an aspect that is lacking in C. And with that, my dear students and the rest of the learners, we have come to the end of this presentation. Continue to part 15 of 95 so that you can listen on the reasons as to why it's good to embrace object-oriented programming languages or embrace object-oriented programming. Congratulations for learning part 14 of 95 on comparison between structured programming and object-oriented programming. You can access videos for the other parts in object-oriented programming series, as well as other computer or ICT videos by clicking or tapping on Emily Swap ICT YouTube channel below this video. 
Remember to subscribe to the channel by tapping on the subscribe button below this video in YouTube if it's not currently reading and subscribed. For any further correspondence, kindly write it to us through the email emilyswap at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening to me and God bless.